In this video, we're going to take a look at four experimental features that are coming to Elementor and Elementor Pro. One of them is a big deal for developers. So if you want to stay in the loop with what's going on with Elementor, this is the video for you. Now, if you're wondering how I get access to these experimental features, well, anyone can actually get access to these experimental features on your website. All you have to do is go to plugins, add new and do a search for Elementor beta right here. And this is going to add a plugin that will enable these experimental features. But it's also going to force Elementor to download experimental versions of Elementor. So do this with care. You don't want to do this on your live websites. Once you have the plugin installed, there's going to be a new option here. So it first of all, you know, you're on the this beta development version because it has this little badge right here. But when I go to the settings right here and then I click on experiments, this is where you can see a list of the experiments that are going on with Elementor and you can enable them or disable them if you want to test them out. So I have some of them enabled. I don't have this one here, this asset loading and CSS loading is enabled because that will break the styles on the sites I've already Already tested it but we have some other goodies here so let's start with the first change and it's a minor one and do you notice anything different on the screen that's right there is this kind of admin bar that is going to appear here on the dashboard of WordPress and also when I'm inside of the different parts of the Elementor settings panels here, it will also show. So if I go ahead and click on posts, you see I don't have it here. But as soon as I click on where it says Elementor, I have it there as well as when I'm in the templates, I have it there as well. Now, it certainly makes sense to have these in the different Elementor settings areas. It's a little iffy here on the dashboard. I think it's fine if your website's built using Elementor but they at least give you an option to hide it here on the dashboard. If you don't want it, you can click on screen options and it's right here where it says element or top bar. So if I don't want it here on the welcome page, but it will also leave it in the other parts of Elementor, you do have that as an option. Now, the next feature is going to make using Elementor so much easier for so many people. If you like templates, Elementor provides templates and they usually pack them into packs. And so a pack might include a header a footer, a pop-up, a archive page, all these different parts that make up a website. However, if you wanted to actually use it on your website, it's the most tedious task I've ever come across to add these all manually to the right parts of your website. It's kind of a major pain in the rear end. In fact, when I visited the Elementor team in 2020 last year, I went to their headquarters. I said, you guys got to do something about this. I wanted to make a video on how to use one of your templates kits and it's just too complicated. I'm not going to make a video on that. Uh, now, of course, it was already on their radar and it's here in an experimental form. Let me show you how easy it is to pick one of these template kits and have it build out an entire website for you in just a minute. So I have the experimental feature enabled. I'm going to go over here where it says templates and then right here it says kit library. It's going to take me into that Elementor interface here. And these are those kits that they've prepared that are completely Complete with pop-ups, headers, footers, archive pages, everything that you would need. So there's only a few here right now. So why don't I go ahead and choose one? I'll go ahead and choose this law one right here. So I'll click on view demo because that's the only option it gives me. And then up here on the right, I can click on apply kit. And then it's going to take me right here and it's going to let me know everything that's going to be imported. And this is going to solve that entire problem that I just described. It's going to import the templates. It's going to import the content as well as the site settings. So all I have to do is go here to the bottom right and click on next and give it 30 seconds or so to build my website for me. There it is. I have this message that the kit is now live on my site and it lists out everything it includes, including a post template, a pop up, a header, a footer. This is great, as well as all of the site settings here, all pre configured and the content for the website. So I'm going to go ahead and click right here where it says back to the dashboard. Now I have the default WordPress theme installed. So let's see, it might look a little funny, but I could switch themes and get it looking perfectly fine. 
Actually, this looks great. I didn't know that the default 2021 WordPress theme had Elementor support, but yeah, here we go. We've got the header there. Obviously, I need to pop in a logo, but the fonts, the topography, the spacing, everything looks exactly like it did inside of the demo. Now, uh, it looks like it's a little buggy because what seems to be missing is a menu. I don't have a menu here, and I'm pretty sure there was a menu included. So let me see if this takes me anywhere or down here. Uh, we don't actually have a menu at all. So I guess what they need to do is improve the menu portion of it. But this is experimental, and I think this is going to make things a lot easier for people that just want to use templates. Now, the next feature, I don't even know if this will actually make it into Elementor. I hope it does, but it was very buggy when I tested it. And so what they've added is an eyedrop color picker inside of Elementor, which I use an eyedrop color picker all the time time when I'm building out websites. Let me show you what that is and we'll try to get it working. All right, so the way it works is when you click on any of these Elementor elements and then you click on the style tab where there's color options and you can choose a color, that's when we would see that color picker. So let's go ahead and just choose this text. That's fine with me. And then I'm going to click on style over here on the left and here's where I can choose a color. And if you notice, there's now this eyedropper. So let me scroll up or scroll down here to where there's some photos. Let's see, there's a photo. So if I wanted the color of this tie, it's actually not too pronounced or any color on this page, I could try to capture it with the eyedropper. So when I click on it, you can see now we've got this eyedropper here. Now that red circle is part of my recording software, so that's not in it. So if I wanted to get the color of this blue shirt and I click, then we have this appear here, which is extracting some of the colors right there. And so this is the blue. It doesn't actually look like the blue to me, but maybe it is. But then I don't actually have a way to then actually choose the color over here. But you can see this eyedropper could be very useful if you're trying to pull out a specific color from an image or something like actually it doesn't even look like it's working that well there we go there we, we had a little bit of movement there okay there we go now i can see where it's pulling out the color codes and i can click on them perfect so let's choose that there we go so actually i just did get it working uh however this eyedropper is kind of clumsy looking but i think it's because my mac computer is making the icon big because that's how i have it set for these recordings and next for the grand finale, we finally have custom breakpoints. Developers are going to be jumping up for joy to finally have an official solution for custom breakpoints inside of Elementor. Now, this is highly experimental, as it says. And so what a breakpoint is, if you're not familiar with it, is basically when the web browser, say you're on a desktop and you have your web browser open and you grab an edge and you start squeezing it in. And once it gets past a certain width, it crosses over a breakpoint and you see the different content that makes up your web page adjust. So maybe a font size gets a little smaller or if there was a column with, with two columns, they would stack on top of each other. And so you can choose what happens at these breakpoints, but now you can add custom breakpoints. Let me show you how this works. Here I am back in that layout. And what we're going to do is enable responsive mode. And so there's this icon all the way down here on the bottom and I'm gonna click on it, it says responsive mode and it puts us here and we have these little icons for the different devices. It's all nice and we have the width and the height settings, but we also have a settings option here. Now, when I click on it, if you noticed here on the left, it took me into the site settings and there's an option here that says breakpoint. So we have the desktop, mobile and tablet. But when I click on the plus, we now have additional options. So we have mobile extra. We have tablet extra. We have laptop. We have, let's see, let's keep going. We've got widescreen. So we have a total of seven custom breakpoints. You see six here, but one of them's a desktop. And what you could do is you can adjust them right here. You can change what that breakpoint is. So now that we've added our breakpoints, let's go ahead and click on update. So they're there. And now I have to reload the editor and I'll show you why. 
Now click on reload and it's coming up and here we are back in the layout. I'm going to go back into responsive mode and guess what? We now have icons for each of those responsive breakpoints that we've added. So if we want to do a mobile phone wide like that, there we go. And you can see we have all these additional options. There's laptop and there you go. We have them all. There's widescreen. We have them all right there. Hey, I put so much effort into these videos just for you. And all I ask in return is that you smash the thumbs up button right down below. It'll take you one second and it's the tiniest thing that you can do. So those are the four things that are coming to Elementor. Some exciting things here. I think I like the template kits the most because it's going to make it easier for people to get up and running. And that's the whole purpose of having a website. Anyway, way is to get up and running with it. So if you have any questions, you can ask in the comment section down below. If you're not a subscriber, I'd invite you to subscribe to the channel. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.